Hello everyone, Wangjo here, and welcome back to Thrones of Britannia. Now I don't know when you'll actually be able to watch this episode, as at the moment my internet's down. Has been all weekend, so I'm hoping it will be fixed so I can actually upload this video for it to be released for you guys tomorrow as usual. But if the video is late and it comes out later on in the week, that's why, so I do apologise. It's one of those things that happens, so I hope you all don't mind. But with that said and done, let's get started with today's episode, shall we? So we're going to be starting things off with a battle between my younger son Harkon and the enemy king of the Oknea, a chap called Wogdvald. Now, the balance bar is very much in my favour, but I'm going to fight this just simply because we haven't had a battle for quite some time and it's not too big a difference. So let's get things going and go straight to the battle. Yeah. So how's it going to look? We do outnumber them nearly 3 to 1, if I remember right. We have more units. They do have a couple of axe units, especially with these two-handed long axes, if I remember the unit's name right. And these got two-handed axes. They're quite devastating on a charge. So we have to watch out for them. And they do have some cavalry as well. So we should be okay, though. But if we put my spearmen as sort of the front line, we'll have them charging forward, lock down the enemy's troops. And then we can send in my axe units and Harkon and his bodyguard around the flanks in order to attack. I might even bring in my skirmishers. We can ask them to move to the enemy's right side. Because if they can get charged, throw their javelins in on the enemy's right. As what normally happens in the later, well, Total War games. We should be able to actually get a hit in because the enemy will be able to block the shield if it comes in from the other side. We'll see what happens. So anyway, let's do this. We're going to pick a nice dry day. I don't know any players that actually pick any other days, even if it's just to make, try and make things a bit interesting. Because all it does, it just pe penalizes you, the player. The AI doesn't seem to have much of a problem with their missile troops, for example, the when they want to try and attack. So, yeah, it doesn't really make much sense to do anything but a nice dry day. Maybe a bit of rain if you are the defender, or you know the enemy's going to use a lot of fire arrows or something like that. Because it does slow them down and makes it so they become more fatigued. So if you're fighting a defensive battle and it's raining, that does help. But any other you know, weather, there's no point using it. Your light yeah. melee infantry. Okay, you... thank you. I already know this. Okay. So it looks like they're going to be waiting to come to me. Although it could be because we're all hidden apart from Harkin. So let's get... Oh, Harkin haven't actually moved into position. So that's why. Okay. Let's do this. We're going to have the spearmen form up along here. Javelin men we're going to have on the front line then because they're going to have less range than my archers in Evex Force. So I want to put them in the front line to assault. These guys are going to form up slightly on the flanks here because the plan will be then that they will be able to swoop around and attack the enemy once my spearmen lock them down. And Harkon is going to take the long walk to join up with his force in the center. That should be all my forces moving into a position of some sort. I would really much like to be able to fast forward time, but it doesn't make any real difference on my, me on my computer. Just like all the later Total War games, I think Worm 2 isn't too bad. It's from Attila onwards that I tend to have the problem. So, yeah, it means I have to sit through Warhammer battles. Well, if you guys remember my short-lived Von Karstein Let's Play, when I tried doing it like that, I had a, I think it was like a 12-minute battle and it lasted over 20 minutes. Just because I couldn't fast forward it and the frame rate started getting lower and lower to win the battle. But anyway, troops are now getting into position. Eric is not that far behind. Looks like the Oknea are planning to stay where they are. So we might as well take the initiative and push forward. Um, I could try and be fancy and come up on the hill, but let's screw it. Let's just move into attack, shall we? So let's move you guys up to about here. So what should hopefully happen is my javelin men will be able to get through frozen. I do have to be a bit careful because they do have archers which are going to have a further range. And they do have these horsemen. So what I might do, it might be better if I actually get my spear unit here to just charge straight into... Yes, thank you. Yeah, I could use my uh, my spear unit here to basically attack their horsemen straight away. Which should hopefully mean we can lock them down and... In particular, while the other three units focus on the other enemy infantry. So, troops again into position. We're still out of range at the moment. But we want to wait for the rest of the troops to get into position. Harkon, you need to get your butt down here. I forgot about you. Again. 
It's not looking good for my heir. No, he's not my heir, is he? It's his brother who's my heir. Okay, skirmishers, you're just going to start taking missile fire, so let's move you guys forward. Everyone else can move forward now as well. Just put them behind the line like so. Harken, let's put you guys over here. Force enemy is now starting to move into position. My troops should just about get in. We'll have to be ready. While they're marching around, if they want to do that while my javelins fire, they're more than welcome to. We'll just get ready to move my troops then behind the chart, spear line. Any second now. One more foe. One more foe, come on. One more foe. Nope, okay, let's get them going. There we go, okay, we're gonna have them so they're not firing a will. I don't know how the game actually works in terms of the firing arc. Like in Rome 2, it was fantastic. You can actually ask your troops to support the enemy, but in this, it doesn't work out quite as well. You end up having some situations where you have your troops getting slaughtered. Oops, damn it. Okay, you guys form into the back here. Okay, you guys can form into uh, attack here. Javelin men, if we can. Can we ask you guys to try? No, we can't because of the uh, oh, the enemy's horsemen starting to retreat. Let's have you guys form up over here. Mordors, you guys can come up into here to go behind them. All right, spearmen get into a nice defensive line, ready to assault. Okay, javelin men, we want you in a nice position behind the enemy to attack. You guys can attack their horsemen by all means if they want to charge into your your line. You guys can come in and swoop in to help. Okay, how's the situation up here? My units are winning decisively. That's good to hear. You guys can now charge into. Let's have you charge into this unit. Like so. You guys can now attack these. My units unfortunately decided to break. Let's have you guys come in to try and help the fighters over here. Alright. We are basically ignoring the javelin men and that up there. They are going to try and get a few hits in, but it shouldn't be anything too major. What will happen as a men is. Let's boost these. Okay, they've run away. Let's have you guys come in to help. So my javelin men are now firing into the rear of the enemy's force. So we should be doing a few casualties there. They are also becoming surrounded on all sides, like so. They're starting to waver, that's great news, it shouldn't be too long. But what we'll do then is we'll ask these guys to turn around and assault them. You guys can come over here and attack the javelin men. Yep, that's his force dead. Okay, you guys can focus on these, you guys can focus on these. Okay, there we go, we've won. Fantastic news. I'll tell you what, I can't feel really bothered. Let's just skip this. <laughs> I can't remember if they actually retreated the first time or not, but it has been a week. So, it could be that one or two of the units survive, maybe these vulnerable troops. We might be able to chase them down. I can't remember how much movement Harkin had. He might be able to get, catch up and kill them. They might just have it that they're going to survive with just 25 men. It was an, an, an unexpected victory. We didn't lose that many. We managed to outmaneuver them and basically swarm them. My troops did okay. Like We have to remember, I'm playing on very hard difficulty for both combat and campaign. So we have got a... Oh, we didn't manage to defeat them all. Okay, let's bounce them back. Okay, that's an annoying. I was hoping to have killed them off, but obviously we didn't. And we still need to chase them down. Okay. Right, we'll sort that out. So what we've got here. So we can actually assign a provincial governor. Where can we actually assign one to? Uh, ah, here it is. Avakla. Now something I'm pretty happy to do is basically use my governors for all the provinces here because I'm going to be taking these. When we start expanding and to try and capture more po coastal settlements, I'm going to leave those. But anything that we can use, like Forge here, let's have you in charge of Avakla. But my main home provinces, I'm pretty happy to have governors there working on things and just making sure they're okay. If we end up taking a large chunk of a territory elsewhere, then it might be useful for a governor. But the majority of them are going to be staying in my home province as King of the North. Right, we've got some buildings that need to be repaired. I'm not going to repair this one, 
because of the fact that we've got the enemy army right next to it and I don't want them on the risk of ordering the repairs, spending the money because how much it's going to cost? 639 just to find out then that we lost it when the enemy take it next turn, you know? Okay, so that can go. What is this one? Okay, so this is still Carden. This is where my faction leader Eric took last time. In fact, you might be able to move now, can you? No, you can't. Okay. Let's have a look. We've got a fair bit of cash from this, so we might as well make it work. So, we need to repair this. The community of St. Colum. So, that's going to be... We need to take that. It actually gives us fame, in fact, as well. Increase it. 10%, 10 fame, 20% income from church buildings. 5% happiness, minus 30% food. Okay, we'll have to make sure that's sorted out. So, what do we want to do with the rest of these? Now, a tanner... We want to get rid of the Tanner. It doesn't actually give me much of an income. It boosts my market and the fur production, but we don't actually have any hunting villages here. So that can go. And the Tiff Hall, to be honest, I'm going to dismantle that as well. We'll probably try and get grain pits or something like that to supplement our food a bit. In fact, speaking of food, next turn I want to make sure that Harkin has a stronger force. Because I need to decide really what we're going to do. Oh, hang on. I'll come to that once I get to the end turn, but 4 gear looks like you are not happy with good sir for some reason. 2 loyalty. Just because it's the difficulty. Okay. Tell you what, if we pick you, we can actually not adopt, seek wife, secure loyalty. We should boost you up a little bit. Plus 2 loyalty, good to hear. Okay. Uh, is there anything we can improve money? I don't particularly want to do that because it's 2,000. But is there one of my other settlements that might be handy with the extra money? You know what? Let's do this. Improve the grain pits here to a grain silo. Nice and done. Okay. Odd cow. My governor. Let me see. Let's give you... You're still reasonably loyal, so I'm fine about that. Let's give you a... Scribe to improve your governance. And Harkon, let's give you a level of... Let's give you a Quartermaster. Improve that movement range a bit. There we go. That's everything. Let's end the turn. So yeah. Something I've been thinking about is what I want to do with regards to the Agnea invasion. Because while Eric is my main commander and he hears marching upwards... The problem is I don't want him to get too far out of position and he can't go after the territory of Gal Golden. Whereas Harkon will be in a better position, but I think I want him to have a couple more troops before he starts invading the Oknea home province. So what I'm probably going to do, I'm going to use Eric and his force to go up as far as, um, what's the settlement called? It's a minor settlement. Uh, Dunekdane, isn't it? We'll have him go as far as that, take that one, and then we'll start marching him back down south and probably at some point declare war on Gal Golden, either this episode or the next. The reason why I'm saying sooner rather than later is because I'm a little bit concerned about the enemies they've been making down in the south of my territory. So I don't want to have it that their enemies are taking the territory before I get my hands on it. So let's have a look. Faction destroyed, East Angle. Okay, they're gone. Viking raids in Dungao. So, our scouts are reporting a small raiding force in Dungao has been seen approaching Britannia from the north. Whereabouts in the north? All the way over an island. That's fine by me. You can go there as much as you want, good sir. Okay. So, something else I want to try and make sure to do is deal with these minor settlements because I don't want them here and I don't want Harkin being basically taking up his time trying to take them. So what I'm going to do is this, we'll have, we we'll come back to Emoeb. What we can do is we can ask for a new commander. Probably go for Kali here. He starts off as a born commander, so dependent on his other traits. He could be a really good addition to the army. He is not the most loyal person in the world though, we have to bear that in mind. Let's stick him in here for the moment. And we'll see what we can do about improving his loyalty a little bit. It might be better for me just to try and spend the money to secure it again. In fact, we can just do about do that. It's going to cost more money though, 1,600. 
Okay, loyalty comes from many places, from the mind, the heart, and from the pocket. This person demands more money to ensure his dedication, what do you say? So we can actually go for getting whatever this trait is sub 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 earned. But if we pay an extra 500, we can buy with words and give me plus two loyalty. We'll do that. There we go, sorted. Alright, yeah, do a nectar in here. So what we'll do is we'll have Eric here lead his force up towards here, we'll take it next turn and then what we'll do is start marching him down south to get into position for Gal Golden because I've noticed here now that Westernass has started pushing back and really sort of taking the territory. Now I don't mind if so much about Alclut here because basically this is not territory although we have got this minor province here. Which one is it? Swift Berlin. We have this one. But the Western Ass has been taking the rest of it. Um, I don't want them to go too far this way because I would like to t take Aaron Golden for myself. And as well, we've got settlements down here that belong to the same province as Iowa. Like, we've got this one here basically. Caldetain. So I want to make sure that we basically take that before anyone else gets their grubby mitts on it. So next turn we'll take that and then Eric can march down south while Harkin moves up north. Odd cow, you're not happy either. Why are you not happy? You're more influential than my ruler. Okay, well we need to sort that out. Don't know how you've become so influential. Base influence is 8, states held as 1. Okay, we need to basically strip you of some influence. Uh, let's just go spend the money on the gold. Unfortunately, it means I can't do much with the buildings in Dilcladen, Cowden here. But we can at least continue to demolish this. We want to have something else instead. Hmm. It shouldn't be too long until we actually get access to toolmakers. I think that'll probably be next turn. Otherwise, because that would give me the 10% industry for those village over there. Here... Whereas the other one, I don't know, we could have a look to see about getting grain pits again, make sure we have that plenty of food available. Right, let's end the turn again. Ugh. Nice cup of tea. I have to say, it's been a bit of a weird experience uh, this weekend. Have Well, not so much weird, it's just different, having no internet. I mean, on the one hand, it means I, I can't ca continue catching up with my Netflix, and when you just have those moments when like you want to use the internet to browse for articles and stuff like that, like I do do a fair bit of things, like I do online courses and stuff, so having no internet for, at this point now, it's been four days. It has been interesting, but at the same time, it hasn't really been a, that big a deal, like I've just carried on doing other stuff instead. Been able to do recording, even though it means I just can't upload the videos, play on my consoles, read, do all sorts of stuff. It's never been one of those moments when I think they're thinking, oh god, I have no internet, how bored am I? Like, I know some people that I know personally will be like. The only annoying thing is, is because I bought myself an Xbox One S as a treat, because of it being E3 and all the deals, and if for those of you that don't have an Xbox, when you first buy one, you need to go through like a startup, um, uh, startup installation, so to speak, and put in things like your account details, and you have to be connected to the internet for that. And if you don't, you can't go skip it or anything. So at the moment, it's just a nice little white box sitting on the shelf below my computer, my computer, my telly, until I get the internet. But hopefully, it'll be soon. Anyway, I loot Leipzig. So Leipzig has hidden treasures. Although its timber stocks are not an ideal target for raiders, the spices, glassware, the other trade... That's a bit of a sentence. Glassware, the other trade goods, some of its citizens have hoarded, make the raid worthwhile. So we've got a thousand gold. And raiding party succeeded for ten turns, which is... Plus twelve loyalty for all... Plus twelve public order, I mean, for all regions. What is that beast all gilded with iron which kills the flocks? He has eight horns but no head and runs as he pleases. Don't know what that's for. Oddkill has been uh, angered by his diminished influence, is plotting against my rule. So we'll have to be a bit careful of that. Although Pet Bribenin would have been fair, but obviously he's not too happy about it. Let's have you go after Ibaness. 
Uh, do I want to sack it or do I want to just occupy? The thing is with occupying is that my tribute levels go down. But I uh, means then I have to deal with the public order issues when it comes to occupying. A sack it? Well, in fact, that didn't actually go up. That did. Typical. Let's just do that, man. So we've got a little bit of extra cash. We do have public order issue in the province, but we have such a high level, it's not going to bother me in the sliders. Okay, in fact, we have to use that to repair that now. Okay. So that done, let's head back now to Dunkelden, and then we see what we can build. So we can definitely get tool makers now, so that's going to be number one. That's just handy. It not only increases my the amount of money I make from industry by 10%, but it also increases the trade resource production from the villages. So things like silver, I've got here, I've got wood that's going to be built. That just increases it by an extra 10%, which is quite nice and gives me more money from income. The other thing as well we want is grain pits, so we can make sure to get more food. So these will be done in four turns, and that's that. Okay, you've taken that. Harkin, we need, I forgot about this. I need you to come down here and kill these off. Hurry along. Alright. Nice, easy auto resolve. I forgot all about these guys last time, so I just sat there and they've just been sitting around. Luckily, they haven't tried raiding me or anything like that, because that would have been annoying. We'll glance in the back and improve my tribute a little bit. Okay. You guys can come back into here. Now, I do want to build up a little force for them, so add a couple more units. We can't go for too many because of the lack of food right now. But I would like to start pushing upwards now into Oknea territory. So let's have a quick look. I think another unit of Axe unit, Axe Moon could do handy. So we have another unit of East Moon Warders. Spearmen are fine, the Javelinmen are fine. What I'm thinking, let's go for two units of Skirmish and Cav. Because these are going to be fast, they can catch up with the enemy's uh, infantry as they run away. And we'll be able to do the occasional charge in. They're not going to do a lot, but the little charge will help out more than nothing. I mean, we've got melee cav, I could go for, in fact, oh no, they don't actually get a charge bonus, these guys, do they? No, but they're able to catch up at least, and it's cheaper than buying those. So let's do that. Still positive for food, so that's not too bad. And now that they've been recruited, we can ask them to start marching up here. It's going to take a few turns, but I think it will be fine. We'll get there eventually. Up oh, research. Okay. So last time we did civic, let's go back to military this time. And the first thing that points out, sticks out to me is the fact that we can now go for siege techniques. Which is having all the foot soldiers and cavalry in the land is little help against the walls of a well defended settlement. Accumulating more experience of besieging our enemies will improve our techniques and capabilities. So if I got this one, I can actually get medium siege engines. But I'm not going to do that right away. I think what I'm going to do is go for this one. So defensive tactics increases my shield effectiveness for sword and axe infantry units by 20%. So they're going to take less damage from missile fire and maybe a bit in melee. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Just take it anyway. The next one unlocks some more units for me, so I think that's a good option to go with. Yeah, see, so you moved... Did my he did he move? Nope. Let's have you guys go up to do neck Uh we'll sack it first of all. And occupy. Losing free in here as well. Now what's the problem? So we've got building that needs repaired. This is the hunting lodge. It does give me an extra estate. <sighs> okay, we can't repair it. And I don't want to get rid of it because it does it's quite a high level one, and it's okay. I mean, when it gets repaired, it'll be even better. But now we've got loads of issues with loyalty because of the fact that we have all these estates, I think. Damn it. Yeah, I was hoping to actually avoid having to deal with this, but the estate thing is going to make things annoying. So let's see, Amoreb, I'll tell you what. Who's in charge of Amoreb? Finbog. Okay, Finbog. You can actually have the title for here. There we go. Sorted. <laughs> nice and easy, eh? So they don't mind if there's actually the king has maybe one or two more. But they don't like it when there's a big difference like that. So, yeah, I've got two states at the moment. The other one has been given away. And everything's been sorted. Easy. 
So something I do want to make sure to do is when I sorted out my home provinces, so when I eventually deal with Galgold and take their territory, like I said, the next step will be starting to expand and look into which coastal settlements to go after because of the going for a kingdom victory, we need to have port settlements. So what I'm probably going to do is, if I find areas which happen to have estates, what I'm going to do is probably give those estates to other characters rather than my king. The reason being is that, from what I've gathered, if your character rebels against you, any estates that they have will also join them in the rebellion. So if I, you know, I don't know, say Finbog decided to betray me and, you know, end up in a revolt, his estate will follow him and it wouldn't bother me so much if his, uh, rebe his estate happens to be all the way down in Ireland, for example. I can just leave him down there and then deal with them as I please. And in the meantime, someone else might deal with them in the meantime. So that's the sort of plan. I'll just have to see if it works. Okay, so Limbog has been defeated. Beadbog has been defeated. Hemilbog has been defeated. Okay, we're starting to see a reduction of the factions. I mean, the other ones are getting bigger. And it won't be too long until we see some very dominant powers in the game, in my opinion. Okay, let's have a look. This needs to be repaired. We can do that now. Let's see, do I want to increase this? Not right away. I do like the fact that it does give me extra industry. But we'll leave it for the moment. I want to have a look to see if there's anywhere else I want to sort out. In fact, we can't really do much more. We can increase the farm here. I mean, that give me a little bit more food. Or we can go for this one, the beach trader. Gives me extra percent of markets and trade worldwide. Or I could just save the money for a little bit. In fact, let's go in. Okay, so what we got here? We got a white mix of things. We got 218 coming in from industry, 135 from farm, 90 from farm, so that's 220, 225, 79, 218. So we do have the forge here, which already gives me an increase to industry. So what we're going to get for this one, let me increase the amount of food from money from food. Going for a mill, that could work. Increases trade resource from industry, does it from any things like that, as well as from farms. Yep, we'll go for that there. Nice and easy. All right, Dunectain is been repaired. We send Kali now over to right here now. and take Ross and the kid. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and occupy this time. So we now have no respect. You're still scraping by but to retain your place in the world ensure your peers respect you enough to pay you off or otherwise send out expeditions to bring back tribute from foreign lands. That's fine. It's a fair balance because on the one hand we only get it by basically doing things like sacking and stuff like that, if I remember right, but occupation they don't like. Yet I need to occupy in order to get to territory. So it's a fair mix-up of what am I supposed to do in these situations. But hey, the ravens are not into things, so you, my good sir, can be disbanded for the moment. I will be bringing him back at some point. Let's see, you should probably be taking some attrition right now, are you? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure you go into Gaussian. It takes 50% of my movements. So we move him slightly forward like so. Just there. Fine. There we go. So that's that bit done. Food sorted. Okay, you need to start marching your way down this way. Before these guys get any funny ideas. Unfortunately, we're too far away. We're not going to be able to make it in time to... Stop them. The best we can do is just march down. We'll take some casualties as we go, I think, but I'd rather try and make sure we get in a position to try and take these territories if we can. In fact, if we did want to get here, how long is it going to... How do we get? Yeah, let's take the risk. Galgoden, we're going to declare war on you. Where are we? Faction? Diplomacy? Where are we? Galgoden. You are welcome here. What have you for me? Declare war. They're going to take Dublin into a f combat. That's unfortunate. 
But we're planning to deal with Devlin at some point, so we'll be fine. We'll take it. Okay, so Eric is going to take some casualties thanks to attrition this turn, but we want to make sure we get into position. It's going to take a couple of turns to get there, and chances are this force is going to get there before us. Hmm. What we could do though is Ira. Can we recruit Kali right now? We cannot. Next turn. So what I want to do is make sure I can bring Kali back here. And while you might not be able to go after do an atom, what have you, you might be able to go after the minor settlements that we want to take thing, especially for to complete the Iowa's province. But if we can go after do an Olag, maybe that could maybe put off the other Westerners faction because of the fact that he'd be technically marching in my lands. Or it might be able to get him to um well Ugh, it's getting tired now, it's a bit late on my, you know, I need to have an early night because we're going back to work tomorrow. But, ooh. Gal Godin's pushing back. Hopefully that's going to cause the Western Ask Force to actually start retreating back in their next turn so they can actually try and deal with this army. I'm not going to go after it. Okay, and the only problem I might have is if they go after Swef Berlin. But well, I'll just have to see what happens during the next turn. I will make sure we get Kali up and run in here. Just so we can make sure he's done. And yeah, let's have you... Can we have you march over to here? Apparently not. Can I have you go by boat? Okay. No, no, no. Wrong way, wrong way. Apparently going that way is going to be too far for you. Let's have you come down here and take this instead. It's going to take a few couple of turns, but that's fine. Anyway, let's end the episode here. It's now reached the 30 minute mark. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. It doesn't matter if it's come out on time or a bit late. And I hope you join me next time as we now start the war against Galgodon as well as continuing the war up in the north against the Ognea. They should be defeated within the next turn or two. Episode or two, I should say. Whereas well, the Galgodon is a new threat and we now got to deal with the potential risk of Dublin coming up to help out. In fact, I don't know where Dublin is. Where is Dublin on this map? We'll check it out next time, but until then, goodbye for now.